So all of these bok choy are looking pretty nice. These guys are looking super wilty. See, everybody's nice. Wiltiness. Root maggot. And root maggot. So now that we don't want that to happen to our kale over here. So was I, was I foolhardy to leave them out? You're supposed to leave them out to, or covered till the end of June, something like that. Okay, so there is a spot where the bok choy had root maggot. And this little patch of bok choy at the edge of the garden here, this one is looking like he'd been done, had root maggot, let's see. So his root looks pretty wrecked, but I'm not seeing any little buggers. It might have happened a while ago. So that's what happened last year too. I had a couple of bok choy that got hit by, by root maggot fly, but uh, I had the kale out all spring. It was not covered at all during the spring and summer and they were fine. So wouldn't that be awesome if the root maggot fly preferred bok choy? Can you guys see all the freaking flies underneath this row cover? I think I'm gonna take these off for the day. Okay, so the story is with the three lettuce beds is that I planted them in succession so I would be able to get one, cut it the first week, cut the next one the next week, cut the next one the next week, and then by then this first one would have grown back and I could start cutting and keep doing that, right? Well, I got this second succession seeded a little bit late and so the transplants were a little bit behind. That's why I put the row cover on because that warmth, you know, warms up the soil a little bit and they go a little bit faster. Charred bed here on the edge, bed of kale and a bed of kale. And um, I went ahead earlier in the season and put Agrabon row cover on all three of these beds, mostly because the kale gets, has a problem with, um, I've had problems with root maggot fly and also later the um, cutworms or whatever moth or butterfly lays different types of caterpillar, right? Or have problems with caterpillars eating. So um, I needed to harvest and this row here, the, these starts were larger than the other ones. And so they were getting kind of outgrowing the tunnel. So I went ahead and pulled off the row cover earlier last week. And then today I just went ahead and pulled off the hoops because I'm not putting the cover back on. With this last row here, the starts were a little bit smaller. Some of them are outgrowing the tunnel, but um, what I did was I pulled the Agrabon row cover off because it is pretty warm today. And I put the bio thrips, it's got, you know, a little more space to let air kind of flow through and stuff like that. And I'm gonna keep that on there just in case you know, I do end up having a problem with the root maggot in the kale. At least I'll have one bed of kale left. Here's a wilty bok choy. Let's get rid of our little slug log here. Let's see what we got. Root maggot. Huh. I see one maggot already covered in maggots. They just eat the stem and it kills the plant. I've got my experimental planting of bok choy where I used the little tiny three quarter inch soil blocks and um, they were doing fine but then we had this you know I had them sitting outside because it was kind of hot in the greenhouse and we had this second downpour <laughs> We've had a few of those um, off and on, and it just like completely trashed them, but they're still, they're still going. So I'm going to see if I can't pull these apart and plant these out in the garden because the ones I've got out there are kind of, you know, going to flower. 
So these are all the bok choy, you know, kind of going to flower or, you know, hit by root maggot. And it looks like, like probably most of them got hit by root maggot. Cause like even this one that was surviving, um, there we go. There's a root maggot right there, you know? Uh, yeah, some of them just didn't get as hard, hit as hard as some of the others. But yeah, we're going to flower, so get some little new guys in there. So I've been scooping, you know, the dirt and the maggots kind of out of the hole to try and just get them out of the soil. Um, when they're a little bit more mature, they turn into this little brown thing, it looks like. Before that, I guess they turn back into a fly or whatever. <laughs> turn back into a fly. <laughs> Before they hatch into a fly or whatever. Hello, oh, buddy, what are you doing? Checking out the new fridge. Oh my goodness. What's he doing? What are you doing? Oh my gosh. Little buddy, what are you doing down there? be one of the little ones. You're not too bright. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we've got the second refrigerator, chest freezer converted to a refrigerator here, and I need to set the temperature controller to the right temperature range. Okay, you guys, so here is the new wash station. I'll go into a little bit more detail about this in some future video, but right now I just wanted to kind of give you a look-see. Um, you know, Tyler built this whole thing. Um, he does everything just kind of magnum. This, These were just stainless steel sheets here that he bent and welded together into nice, you know, wash down counter things and um, put in the faucets and stuff this this uh sink was purchased and he just kind of plumbed everything into it and this is going to be my greens bubbler so um this is the greens bubbler right here and it gets put down in here hooked to this and there's a leaf blower down here which blows the air into it so I haven't used it yet. I've got to practice. Maybe today I can kind of use it because I've got to do it for real tomorrow. We needed kind of a utility sink and prep area anyway because Tyler does his um, subsistence fishing, you know, a couple weeks out of the year and, you know, smokes and cans the fish and stuff like that. I'm going to be using it more like, you know, three to four months out of the year. So we kind of wanted it to be dual purpose. And so the thought process of was if we had a big utility type sink or a big commercial sink, then um, we could put the greens bubbler in that and then it could be used for both things. And if in the future I need something bigger, we could do something, you know, a completely separate greens bubbler unit. But this is what we're doing for now. So yeah, dual purpose and that's what this is. Okay, so I'm back down here at the garden. Um, I was out here happily planting out little tiny sad bok choy starts and um, then I was chatting with Tyler and he said, you know, it's supposed to pour down rain tomorrow. I hadn't even looked at the weather and um, so yeah, like a couple of inches of rain. And so I didn't want to be out here. Tomorrow's my harvest day for the lettuce, the you know, to do the lettuce mixes. And I don't want to be out in the rain doing that. So because I have an extra refrigerator now, I am going to get all of this lettuce out of this bed. Um, Tyler had got these totes. They don't um, exactly fit into, you know, they don't fit, you know, width wise into the fridge, the chest freezer. Um, but I think that I can still maybe make it work. So I'm gonna fill up these totes with lettuce and throw them into the refrigerator. Um, and then if I have time, I'll plan out the rest of those bok choy starts. But um, I don't know if you can see here, but the baby char, the new planting of baby char is coming in nicely so I can get some of that. Shoot, should I do that today? Oh my God, I would need to do that today too. <gasps> and yeah, and oh my gosh, Let's take a look at this. You see, um, these are 
they're, yeah, they're just, they're baby leaf size. I can get some of these. And then you can see all of the little guys that I planted, the four rows that I planted later in into this bed because I wanted, I decided, okay, I want nine rows of this stuff instead of five. And they're coming up beautifully. That is hand seeding for you folks. The no seams came out. I had to put my my screen bug hat on. <clears throat> my screen bug hat. And then it started um, sprinkling a little bit of showers, but not too bad. Um, but I got the green and the red lettuce cut in this bed. There's some that I already cut from last week. They're starting to grow back and I just left them alone. Kind of took the time to clean up around, you know, like the dead leaves and stuff around the base of the lettuces. But um, I think I'm gonna take a little bit of time, have a snack, come back out and grab this baby chard here. And then also maybe get the rest of my little baby uh, bok choy starts planted out. I've got five of these tubs in here and I could fit one more. So actually that works out pretty awesome. Okay, so everybody's shaved. My little dear friend is sitting on his little sand pile again. All right, buddy, I gotta come out here. Hey, buddy. I gotta come out here. Your horns are getting tall. So it's not really working as planned. It's supposed to move the mix like this. So I've taken out about half of the lettuce mix. And you can see that even this corner over here, this lettuce is not moving at all. So the leaf was all actually pretty clean when I um, harvested it, but just got a few little guys down there at the bottom. A little bit of cloudy water. I think I'll change this out. Okay, I ended up with one, two tubs of leaf, two tubs of lettuce mix, and that, uh, what was that? Six lettuce, six pounds of lettuce, three pounds charred, a little bit of orange nine pounds of material. So this is how this looks when it's empty. You've got um, a leg here and a leg here and it goes up. And then the, you know, the leaf blower goes up in this guy and blows the air up in there and it comes out. And Tyler got this design from a uh, market gardener. I'll link the channel above. But I don't, for whatever reason, it's not creating the situation that that fellow was experiencing. So Tyler is going to go ahead and modify this, make it work a little better. So I told Tyler that we should just regroup next week and I could just swoosh it around into the bubbles with my hands out of this corner. But he uh, went and put another leg on this. And we're gonna turn it on Blastola and we'll see how it works. Okay, now he's on Turbo Blastola. We need a row. Oh, lovely number here. I only left him on for about like a minute. Um, I was afraid that he would uh, bruise the greens, but Everything still looks fine, even the little delicate, more delicate orange. Um, yeah, I wonder, the, like the greens were really not very dirty when they went in. I wonder if they were dirtier, if they would need like longer or something. Anyway, learning as I go. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, the greens are kind of all the way through the column in the water. It seems like there should be like some floating on top and then like you know, four inches or so of just water at the bottom. So things that can kind of, little chunks can kind of drift out and stuff. I don't know. 
I'll figure it out. Okay, so that is obviously not, this is not a how-to video, folks. This is just how I'm doing things right now as I'm learning <laughs> how to use this setup. Um, yeah. <laughs> is that it? Is that everything? I'm going to bag things up, deliver tomorrow, do a little bit more harvesting tomorrow for the kale and chard. I, um, had a, num a number of people out of town. My restaurant person fractured her arm, so they didn't have orders for that. So I actually put my stuff out on the Wrangell community group. I shared my post. I've been really lucky. There's been no, no CMs out here, but there's one mosquito that keeps trying to attack me. Um, so, yeah, okay. So I put, yeah, I put, I put it, the post out on the larger group and I got a few more orders and stuff. So hopefully I have enough stuff. Hopefully I don't have too much stuff. Okay, so it's just a few days shy of the end of June. So I'm gonna take this last bug netting off. All row cover is off the garden. All the little metal hoops are pulled off. And we are gonna have a week of sun. One of the forecasts is gonna get up to 80. I've only seen it 80 degrees once here. So it's gonna be 80 degrees or 70 degrees.